Hey, how you doing? It's Johnny Miller from Point Blank Online Music School. And I'm here today to give a little tutorial for you in Ableton Live, uh, focusing on a sidechain compression technique for DJ mixes. Normally sidechain compression we use in production to uh, get a nice balance between our drums and our basses. But I'm going to show you how you can use it in a DJ set, in a sequence DJ set in Ableton Live's Arrange View to get a smooth transition from one track to another. I hope you find it useful. You can check out loads of cool free content from Point Blank on their website, pointblankonline.net, and also on the Point Blank blog. So enjoy the tutorial today. Look after yourselves. Peace. So here we are in a range view. At this point in the proceedings, I want to go from uh, this Miami Horror uh, track called Sometimes, just like an indie dance thing. Uh, I want to go into a track, uh, kind of electronic track uh, by John Talabot uh, called uh, Changed. So at the moment, I've just lined them up end to end. And uh, if I play the end of the Sometimes track, we've got these nice vocals and keys. And then right at the end, we've got this kind of long kind of held keyboard note. Now I'm going to use that in the mix, in the transition. The, uh, the John Talabot thing just starts just with drum beats and little keys. And I like the way this thing starts. I want to use that as well. I don't just want to fade it up. I want those beats to just kind of drop in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to use a simple cons uh, duplication to extend this end section. So we've got that long held note. And I'm going to extend that right out into the John Talabot track. And, uh, and then I'm going to use sidechain compression to give a nice ducking feel on, on that long extended keys uh, part just to make that transition a bit more interesting instead of just stopping one and starting the next one or you know doing a kind of standard mix where they overlap for long periods of time just going to get a bit more creative with this so first things first I need to identify a section of uh, the end of sometimes that I can use essentially loop so this section here that's fine that's got a clap in it as well that's uh, laying down on beat two and beat four of the bar I'm just going to highlight that and separate it using command E. So now I've got this extra clip that um, I can literally just hit now hit command D and duplicate. So I'm just hitting command D on my keyboard there. Let's just open this out a little bit and I'm just going to put in loads of those actually. There we go. So if I just solo track four, let's just listen to that. We've got this nice long held keys part. Now I'm going to move the John Talabot track back a little bit just so we get to there. And by the time the vocal finishes, let's just listen to this actually. I need to make sure I put the, the beginning of this clip in the right place. Yeah, just here. That's perfect. Right. Let's take the solo off and just hear that. So just when this repeating keys part starts to play, that's when the beats from the John Talabot track kick in. Right. Uh, next thing is the key. I'm going to knock the John Talabot track into key. Uh, so musically, it works with the end of the sometimes track. And to do this, I'm just going to bring the volume down a bit on the sometimes track and just play that section again. To see so you can hear this. Now on the John Talabot track, I'm going to go to transpose. Very simple. Just bring it down a couple of semitones. Now it's in key. And as you can hear, that just works really nicely now with that long extended uh, key section on sometimes. Now for the sidechain compression. Uh, I'm going to add a compressor. Let's go to audio effects and just drag a compressor onto track four. There we go. 
I open up the side chain and I'm going to side chain the, uh, the audio from, from track five, which is the John Talbot thing. So, okay, audio from uh, track five. I'm also going to use the EQ. I'm going to switch the EQ on, go to the low shelf, and just go down here to sort of around 100 hertz. And now you can see the kick drum signal coming into the compressor. All I need to do now is just bring the threshold down. We get that lovely ducking effect. This is kind of standard stuff, but you know, most people use this in production to get that lovely ducking effect on a, on a pad or on a strings or keys or something. I'm using it in a DJ mix, which I think sounds really cool. And it's quite easy to set up. Good tip for side chaining, feed forward one, the model, it just works a little bit better with side chaining. You sometimes get clicking uh, and uh, sort of extra noises when you use some of the other models, but feed forward one seems to work really nicely for side chaining to kicks. Right, the last thing I'm gonna do uh, is just work the automation. And of course, I don't want that side chain, I don't want this compression set up for the rest of the, you know, the whole track. So I'm just gonna bring the threshold uh, right up. In fact, I've just moved the model, haven't I? Let's go to just move the threshold pot. There we go. The fader rather. And now you see that the um, the threshold automation lane is open just because I moved the value on the device. That's just one of Ableton's little built-in functions that's really useful. I'm going to keep that threshold right up high. And then just as we get into the John Talabot beats, I'm going to bring, going to program in automation so that threshold falls drops like this I could actually go a bit further down and let's get that happening a little bit quicker as well so it kind of fades in just over the first bar we get a nice smooth transition That's a bit too much, isn't it? Let's just open this out. How about that? So it just eases in with the side chain effect. There we go. That's nice. Right, now lastly, of course, as a DJ, I need to fade out track four. I need to fade out the sometimes keys. So to do that, I'm just going to quickly move the output fader on the compressor. And now, of course, because I've just moved that ever so slightly on the... Uh, device that the output gain lane is open in a range view so I can just program in a level change like so and essentially I've kind of replaced the uh, the channel you know the audio track fader which I'd normally use to fade things out fade things in fade things out I'd, I'd normally use the the track fader but I've replaced that now with the output gain on compressor so just over time as the John Talabot track kind of gets going that side chain action is just going to play underneath, bringing some real character into the mix transition. And now the output gain is ever so slowly going to fade down. And there's my DJ mix. So I've done three things there. I've extended the end of one track using just simple duplication. I've changed the key of the John Talabot track just using transposition inside the clip. And I've used automation and in terms of workflow, quick setup, just move the fader, the automation lane pops open for you in a range view. I've then used automation to bring in the sidechain effect and fade the track out. And that is some extra little bits how to DJ using Ableton Live and bring in some production ethics into your DJ mixes, which I personally think is a great thing to do. All right, there's loads of free content on pointblankonline.net and on our YouTube page as well. Um, so check that out and I'll be back again next month to show you uh, some more little cool tricks with Ableton Live 8 for Point Blank Online. Okay, peace.